Hey guys, Zah here, and today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at a recent composition taking both ladder and competitive play by storm, and it's Demon Hunter, Death Knight, Healer, primarily played with a Restoration Druid as a preferred healer, but working adequately with pretty much all healers apart from Priest right now. So, Demon Hunter, Death Knight. This composition is played with a Havoc Demon Hunter of course, and then Unholy Death Knight. Frost doesn't really work, so stick to Unholy for now. In regards to healers, as mentioned, Druid is preferred, but Restoration Shaman and Mistweaver are still good against certain matchups. Holy Paladin works, but again is just a little bit weaker, and Discipline Priests are not the greatest right now, so avoid playing with one if possible. In the meta right now, this composition is great against pretty much everything, being good against Rogue Mage, most other cleaves, Thunder, all Warlock cleaves and other Dot cleaves, and even does good into Elemental Frost Mage, which is considered a counter to most melee cleaves. All of this is due to extremely high consistent damage and just how difficult it is to kill this composition. Okay, let's now take a look at the strengths of this composition. First up is of course, you guessed it, Mana Rift. This ability is the number one reason this composition is just so strong right now. It allows you to just always have the win condition of Umin the enemy healer. Next up is how hard it is to kill any of you. Demon Hunters have Blur, Darkness, Never Walk, their self healing. Death Knights have insane self healing, AMZ, AMS, Icebound, and Druids, well, they can just rotate Iron Bark, Bark Skin, and simply kite or sit in bear form whilst their partners peel, giving you not really a good target to tunnel down. Not to mention the consistent damage that this composition can put out. Demon Hunters and Death Knights both deal very high consistent damage. This means that the onslaught that this composition is going to be putting out is in fact never ending. Have you ever tried casting versus a death knight? Well, add imprison, two stuns and an extra kick into the mix. This composition has some of the highest disruption in the game, being able to lock down a caster and make you hate your life. Next up, let's take a quick look at the weaknesses. Although this composition is probably the strongest in the game right now, it still comes with a few small weaknesses that can be exploited. Lack of crowd control is your first one. You don't really have that much crowd control. If your druid isn't playing cyclone or simply can't get any of them out, then you don't really have that much crowd control outside of a few small stuns and an in-cap coming from your demon hunter. Now, I put this here reluctantly as it could apply to every composition, but this composition is night and day without gear. It relies heavily on defensive traits and being able to survive. So the more gear you have, obviously the better you'll do. Expect to see a huge difference when facing a demon hunter without the burning soul defensive trait for instance. Not really a true weakness per se, but demon hunter death knight is notorious for having extremely long games. With most ending on mana, you can often have to maintain focus for a very long time. Probably the biggest weakness of this composition is its lack of a healing reduction debuff. With neither demon hunter nor death knight bringing a mortal strike effect, it can often be difficult to land a kill before ooming your opponent and dampening stacking up. All right, enough of the strengths and weaknesses, let's get into how you should be playing this comp and give you a general outline of your win conditions. The overall game plan of DHDK is actually very simple. You're going to be aiming to survive whilst landing mana rifts onto the opposing team's healer, rotating your defensive cooldowns as required. As landed mana rifts is such a vital part of this comp, the best way to do this is to have your death knight stick to the main target, applying as much pressure as possible, whilst your demon hunter goes over to the healer every time he has mana rift. Now, you can secure mana rifts a few ways, mainly with detainment, fall eruption, and chaos nova, and either out of your druid's bash or even asphyxiate. So, just look to communicate with your team to maximize your burns. Consistent damage is also extremely important. There is no point landing these mana burns if you're not dealing any damage, and the healer is just not going to use any mana to keep his team up. Make sure you are still doing high DPS. Doing things like Grip, Chaos Nova, and other setups isn't really what this comp is about. Just look to maximize your damage to win on mana. It's just that simple. Furthermore, as an extension to burn in the healer's mana, you can't afford to let them get drinks. This can be done mainly with having a Death Knight's pet sticking to the healer, with all three members of your team making a conscious effort to always be aware of the healer's positioning at all times. Tracking Shadow Mound can also be a very good tool to assist with this, as having your Demon Hunter permanently sit on the healer. Or even have your Druid chase the enemy healer when you are safe. 
But yeah, as mana is your main win condition, be very aware of drink. And lastly, it's just plain defensive. This comp, as I've mentioned a few times now, focuses mainly on just winning on mana. You do this by demon hunters and death knights having incredible amounts of self healing. So they don't actually require that much healing at all. This gives your healer a lot of time to focus on positioning and countering the enemy setups. However, you do have a lot of defensive cooldowns to rotate through. So communicate well with your team and make sure you don't overlap them. But to summarize, this composition is actually incredibly simple. Train the target you can have uptime on and look to shut them down with the death knight and then focus on consistent damage. Land burns as often as you can and then just simply stop drinks, all whilst rotating your defensive cooldowns. DHDK is currently just extremely strong and good into almost all compositions right now. So go out and have fun outlasting your opponents. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this short guide on how to get rank one as DHDK. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.